I have one word for you, my friends. Well, it does have a hyphen, but it is just one word. E-waste. Yeah, I know some of you are cringing. We don't like to talk about it or think about it, but it is a completely real problem where we, as the engineering community, can make a difference. And a great way to combat e-waste is energy harvesting. And that includes both designing energy autonomous applications and extending the lifetime of the batteries we use. And isn't energy harvesting just cool too? I don't know a single one of my friends who wouldn't be interested in my new wearable device that has perpetual energy. So, save the earth and make cooler products? Sign me up! Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Energy harvesting is a great way to ensure a sustainable future of electronics by eliminating batteries and e-waste. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Rodrigo Mesquita from Nexperia and I explore the process of designing in energy harvesting and why Nexperia's inductorless PMICs are an energy harvesting game changer for wearable technology, sensor-based applications, and more. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Nexperia. Hi, Rodrigo. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hello, uh, Amelia. It's a pleasure. So we're talking about Nexperia's energy harvesting solutions today. But before we get started, what all will we be covering today? Yeah, so today we want to talk about the energy harvesting solution, what it is and what are the potentials for energy harvesting. The second point is our PMIC or our power management IC, that is the NEH2000BY. Then we are going to talk about the use case and design ins and finally how to get started. Brilliant. So let's start at the very beginning. Can you explain a bit about what exactly energy harvesting is? Yeah, so talking about energy harvesting, it's important first to understand the concept. In traditional systems, the user is responsible for bringing energy to its device. And this energy is brought either by batteries or wires. But when it comes to energy harvesting, when you include energy harvesting system in your device, the user is out of this equation because the ambient source brings energy directly to the device. So this is the fundamental concept of energy harvesting. Energy harvesting consists of collecting energy from an ambient source. So Rodrigo, one of the biggest benefits of energy harvesting is the elimination of batteries and e-waste, right? Yeah, so just to give a number, 15 billion of primary batteries are disposed per year. And not all of these batteries are recycled. And these cause immense, a huge problem to the environment. But when you make this transition to energy harvesting systems, you can ensure sustainable features of electronics because you don't need to replace batteries anymore. You don't need to throw away the batteries. That makes sense. So what is all included in an energy harvesting system? What kind of components are we looking at here? So fundamentally, an energy harvesting system is composed by five blocks. The first block is the energy source. That can be, for example, light or temperature or even radio waves. Then you need the second component that is the harvester. The harvester is the transducer that will convert this energy source to electricity Okay, so imagine this can be a PV cell or a TEG, that is a thermoelectric generator, a piezoelectric device, or even an RF antenna. The third block, that is the core, is the converting. We need a PMIC, we need a DC-DC converter to adapt the energy from this harvester to your load and to your storage element. Then... We need a storage element. In this case, it's important to have this understanding that in an energy harvesting system, we still need a storage because we need a buffer, a buffer of energy because your load does not consume energy at the same rate and at the same time that you generate. And finally, of course, we have the load. We have the guest that is what consume 
this energy. All right. So can you give us an example of what an energy harvesting design would look like? Yes, yeah, sure. One example of uh, light energy harvesting. Okay, so as source, we have indoor light or outdoor light as input energy, okay, as energy source. The number two is the PV cell, that is the harvester for the system. The third part is the PMIC, that in this case is our solution, is the NEH2000BY. Number four, we have the storage element that can be a battery, a small rechargeable battery that will be trick charged by the energy harvesting. Okay, and finally, you have your application that is a perpetually powered application. And the energy harvesting has, of course, a big impact because you reduce the amount of discarded batteries, you reduce the total cost of ownership, and also you increase the product features. So these are the main advantage, the main values brought by energy harvesting. Okay, so Rodrigo, overall, what are the main objectives for these kind of systems? This is very important to understand that when it comes to energy harvesting, the first objective is to make your application plug and forget, is to make your application energy autonomous. And this happens when you harvest more energy than you consume. So whenever you harvest more than you consume, your application will be energy autonomous. But When you don't harvest more than you consume, you still have an advantage. That is the second objective. So the second objective is to extend the application battery lifetime. For instance, imagine that you harvest 50% of your consumption. So if you have this scenario, you double your battery lifetime. Energy harvesting, or you can target plug and forget or battery extension. All right. So, Rodrigo, Nexperia has a solution that is perfect for these kind of applications, right? Can we take a closer look at that? The Nexperia solution that is launched this month is the NEH2000BY. This is a low bill of materials converter, a very compact QFN16 package that uh, has only three by three millimeters. This solution needs a minimum amount of external components. No inductor is required, just to have an idea. The total assembly footprint is around 12 millimeters square. This solution is optimized for light energy harvesting, so either indoor or outdoor, as I explained. The power range is from 35 micro to 2 milliwatts. The performance, we can top 80% efficiency, and we also have MPPT in this solution. And the MPPT stands for Maximum Power Point Tracking, and this algorithm adapts within one second. So this is our solution. So Rodrigo, I'm really interested by the smaller footprint of this PMIC. So can you address that in a bit more detail? Sure. So we have here a comparison between a traditional energy harvesting system and the next period in doctorless PMIC. So as you can see that in traditional solutions, you have inductors, you have resistors, but when you observe the Nexperia solution, you only need three external components. There are just three small and cheap capacitors. So reduce need for external components can be easily integrated with IC or your module, and we can have up to 20 times smaller footprint PCB area. It's, again, inductorless. Our solution is inductorless. What about that MPPT feature? Can you explain that as well? Yeah, sure. So the MPPT stands for Maximum Power Point Tracking. So here in this video, we have the situation. So the white line is the available power. And as long as you move your arm, you change the light intensity. Also, you change the optimum power. So what our MPPT does, it tracks the maximum power, but it does it very fast, much faster than traditional solutions. So these increase the overall efficiency of our system. In the next slide, just to give more context, we have the blocks, the internal blocks of the NEH2000BY, and we can observe that the converter is controlled by the MPPT. 
the MPPT keeps tracking the maximum power point of your harvester. And here in the right side, we do have PV cell output power characteristics. So the orange curve is the power curve of a PV cell. And as we can see, we have a maximum power point. So the MPPT keep tracking this maximum power here. You also said that this PMIC was optimized to efficiently harvest energy from indoor and outdoor ambient light. And that includes PV cells? Exactly. The PV cells are the harvester in this system. Our solution is optimized for PV cells because we do have the MPPT, but also our solution is a boosting converter. So we boost the input voltage, we boost the voltage from the PV cell in two times. So 2x is our boosting factor. And this boosting factor is ideal for PV modules compatibilization with batteries. So speaking of batteries, what about different battery types? Yes, our solution, it complies with several battery types. In this graph, we can observe the maximum, the minimum, and the nominal voltage for different technologies. And we are comparing these voltage levels with the NEH2000BY maximum and minimum voltage. And we can see that these batteries are operating within this range. Okay, so what kind of power range are we talking about here? We are talking about low power. It's important to define the power range for this uh, solution because we cannot power high power applications. So this is the concept. So our power level is from 35 micro to 2 milliwatts. So as we can see here in the blue curve, from 35 micro to 2 milliwatts, you have at least 70% efficiency. But the majority of this power curve is close to 80%. Also, it's nice to visualize that we do can harvest more. We can harvest more energy, but with reduced efficiency. That makes sense. Now, beyond what you just mentioned, Rodrigo, what do you think are the overall benefits that Nexperia Energy Harvesting Solutions brings to the table? So the benefits are our solution is very small cost-efficient, simple, and has a very high performance. So talking about small, as I mentioned, just 3 by 3 millimeters and 12 millimeters of assembly area. In terms of cost-efficient, is regarding to the bill of materials that you save. So just by not having an inductor, you can already imagine how much money you save by applying our solution. Also, it's very simple, so no pre-programming required and a high performance. So we do have a very fast MPPT and up to 80% conversion efficiency. Okay, so what kind of use cases are you seeing these energy harvesting PMICs being a good fit for? For instance, we can apply energy harvesting in sensors in general or in TV remote controls, electronic shelf labels or wearables, okay? And what these four categories has in common they have some limitations. So, for example, sometimes they are in practical locations, so they are hard to reach. In other situations, they have a limited durability because the battery goes empty very fast. You do have the cost of your battery swaps. And here is important to understand that this cost is not only characterized by purchasing another battery, but also the cost by going there and changing this battery. Imagine that you have an application with hundreds or thousands of sensors in the field, for example, and then you have to go one by one and change the battery. So this is a limitation. This is a cost. This is what we call ownership cost. And finally, you have impact in the environment. You generate e-waste. So all of these devices, all of these categories have these limitations. That makes sense. Now, Rodrigo, let's talk more about that first use case you mentioned, sensors. What kind of specific benefits are we looking at here? For example, when we are applying energy harvesting in sensors in general, you can have a better real-time monitoring. For example, you can increase the number of measurements or of messages that you send. 
you reduce the maintenance costs, you reduce the total ownership costs, you increase the reliability, you have a positive environmental impact. So, Rodrigo, I've never really thought about energy harvesting for TV remotes before. So tell me more about that. We can implement energy harvesting TV remote controls. And what are the benefits by doing that? You can improve, for example, the user friendliness. You can improve the product design. For instance, you don't need to design your remote control with any moving part because you don't need to change the batteries. You improve the cost and time efficiency. Okay, for me, this is very curious because you can reduce the customer service calls. Imagine that you are a TV manufacturer and you have uh, several, you have hundreds, thousands of phone calls saying, hey, my TV is not working anymore. And this is just because the battery is empty. So you can even reduce the service calls. And also you have a positive environmental impact. For sure. Now, you also mentioned ESLs as well. So talk to me about this application. What benefits are we looking at here? The ESL is another very cool application. And among the benefits, you can have a revenue boost. You can optimize your operations. Like you can change the price more often through the day. You can have a LED blink alert or Maybe you can even add sensors in your electronic shop labels. You have a retail compliance, so the price will always be available. You don't need to worry about your battery going empty. And once again, the environmental impact. Because imagine, in a typical supermarket, you have thousands of batteries. And sometimes it's better to replace the whole ESL than replace the single battery. So imagine the amount of waste that you save by applying energy harvesting. Absolutely. Now, wearable technology also seems like a perfect fit for energy harvesting. Yes, it is. You can improve the customer experience because, of course, you don't need to recharge your battery that frequently. You have a size reduction because since you have energy harvesting, your battery can be smaller. So, of course, your overall system can also be reduced. You can add innovation value and we have a positive societal impact. Why societal impact? Because most of these wearable devices are intended for healthcare. So once you don't require an external energy source, then you have a benefit for the whole society. So this is also an advantage of energy harvesting applications in wearable devices. Okay, so Rodrigo, if my audience wants to get started designing an energy harvesting into their next application, what steps do they need to keep in mind? The very first thing we have to observe is the application requirements. You have to understand the operating voltage. You have to understand what are your desired features, but mainly you have to define, you have to measure or to calculate your power consumption. So how much energy your consumption consumes. Then we have to look at the harvesting source. So how much energy is available? The third part, you have to analyze the PMIC. So based on the application, based on the harvester specification, after you need to select your harvester. So in the second step, You define your energy source, but here you have to define what harvester to use, what are the dimensions for this harvester, for instance. And finally, you have to verify your complete solution. So you have to put the energy consumed versus the energy harvest and identify, okay, is it autonomous or do I have a battery extension? So these are the fundamental steps for the energy harvesting design. So do you guys have any reference designs to help guide my audience? We do have a reference design and we can talk more about this design uh, right now. But this energy harvest is composed, as I explained, by energy source, a harvester, a converting part, a storage and your application. Fantastic. So let's start with that light source. What does that reference design include? Imagine the ambient circumstance, the ambient uh, condition. So we are designing for indoor light. The luminance level is 600 lux. 
which can be found in places like a grocery store or a laboratory or normal office, and that this light is available for eight hours per day. So this is our light source. So what does the PV reference design include? The PV for this reference design can be, for example, a Panasonic PV AM1454. This PV is a amorphous indoor solar panel, and this is the dimension, so hopefully 4 centimeters by 2.6 centimeters. The open circuit voltage is 2.4 volts. The optimum voltage, so what is the optimum voltage? Is the voltage where you have the maximum power, is hopefully 1.85 volts. And the power that can be generated at 600 lux is 67 microwatts. So Nexperia has a reference design for the PMIC, right? Yes. The PMIC for this reference design is the NEH2000BY. We have 80% efficiency in this case. Our boosting factor is 2x. We have a ultra-fast maximum power point tracking, ultra-fast MPPT. The power range, as I explained, it, is from 35 micro to 2 milliwatts. This solution is inductorless and only 3 by 3 millimeters QFN16 package. So what about the storage element you mentioned? For this reference design, we are assuming lithium-ion 3.6 volts. That can be, for instance, the LIR2450. This battery is a rechargeable battery, of course, with 120 milliamp hour. And the dimensions are 24 millimeters of diameter and only 5 millimeters height. And the peak current for this battery is 240 milliamps. So, Rodrigo, we also need to consider overvoltage protection too, right? Right, that's correct, because batteries should not be overcharged. Some batteries already have the overvoltage protection included, but this LIR2450 does not. So we are recommending in this reference design an external OVP, that is uh, this part number, so the S1000C42. The threshold voltage is 4 volts, the consumption is very, very low, so less than one microamps, and the output goes high when the battery voltage is above these four volts. So what about specific applications? Do you guys have any reference designs for those as well? Yes, with this reference design, we can generate daily 1.26 milliwatt hour. And this amount of energy is enough to run autonomously one typical electronic shelf label or a typical remote control. So, Rodrigo, can we dig a little deeper into the details? What would a schematic look like here? So this is the schematic. We only have three capacitors, so C1, C2, and C3. As we can see, there is no inductor. And we have the external OVP implemented to protect the battery. The total assembly area for this reference design is 6 mm by 6 mm, is 36 mm square. It's important to mention that 36 mm square because we are assuming an external OVP. Okay, so what would the bomb look like? So the B of materials, so the NEH2000BY, we need two capacitors, one over voltage protection, and a solar panel, and a rechargeable battery. Okay, so what if my audience wants to customize their energy harvesting application? Is that possible as well? Yes, it is possible. If you want, for example, to increase the energy generation, the energy harvested, you can either expose your system to more light, or you can increase the solar panel area. So imagine that you have a 12 centimeter square PV, you can increase to a 15 or to 18 centimeter square, just for example, or you can expose the system for the same light with the same PV cell, but for longer periods. You can change the reference design. Okay, so what about the plug and forget applications you mentioned earlier? 
Yes, we have here some examples. So some typical examples of uh, remote controls, electronic shelf labels, smart tags, and sensors. So for these four types, we have typical daily consumption. So for a remote control, 1.2 milliwatt hour per day or 1 milliwatt hour per day for electronic shelf label, 3.8 for smart tags, and 0.7 milliwatt hour for sensors in general. For the two first applications, if you have a 10 centimeter square PV exposed to indoor light for 10 hours, this can be 100% energy autonomous. In the case of a smart tag or sensors, for instance, with the same 10 centimeter square, but now exposed to outdoor light for three hours, you can also have 100% energy autonomous application. So just to remember, energy autonomous is when you harvest more than you consume. So this is just an example, just to give ideas of what is possible, what are the PV dimensions, what the environment looks like. Very cool. Now, Rodrigo, if my audience wants to get started, do you guys have an evaluation board for this solution? Yes, we have an evaluation board that is designed to be simple. So you can evaluate the NEH2000BY. You just need a PV cell. You just need the input and a storage element and a load as output. This evaluation board is plug and play, so no pre-programming required. And since this is very small, 70 millimeters by 10 millimeter, it is perfect to integrate in many applications. Just to give more details about this evaluation board, so we have here the NEH2000BY, we have the harvester, that is the DC input, we have the battery connection, that is the output of the system, we have pins for measurement, so we can observe if the system is ready, we can see if the system is enabled or not, we have a GND reference and the VREF, that is the reference voltage for our system. Also, we have over voltage protection in this case. We are providing two variants for our evaluation board. So one variant for a 4.2 volts storage element, for instance, for a LiPo battery or a 3.6 voltage storage element that can be a lithium iron phosphate. So two variants of overvoltage protection. Excellent. Now, Rodrigo, when considering an energy harvesting solution, what would you suggest my audience keep in mind? So we have to keep in mind that efficiency, that uh, bill of materials, that uh, simplicity is fundamental for energy harvesting application. So if your audience have a low power device with limited battery lifetime, and if your audience wish for a more sustainable product or need a more feature-rich application, then you should go for the NEH2000BY. Unique design with a very high performance and removes the need for battery replacements. And where to buy? So now it's available on Mauser. So on Mauser you can find the NEH2000BY and you also can find the two flavors of Evaluation Board. Awesome. This has been really great. Thank you so much for joining me, Rodrigo. It was a pleasure, Amelia. Thanks for the invitation. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Nexperia. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash EE Journal.